So Chris, you came to Australia in 1962. 62. Long weekend. Queen's birthday. In really? Yes. Okay. Yes. This is a, an anniversary. And uh, just as a young man, but you said to us, you, you decided, okay, if I'm going to be in Australia, I, I will learn to love this country as well as my own country. Uh, I fall in love with this country, this place, uh, and for many reasons. One of them, although I could not uh, communicate, still I found a lot of support and, and, and guidance from the local people. Uh, of course we had the, the old <coughs> person that used to call us names and, and so on and so forth, but look that you can find that even people want, you find people disliking you in your own birthplace. So I, I didn't get upset, but I pay emphasis into those who really pay attention to me. I make up my mind that I will uh, simulate and I'll be part of this community and how blessed I have been because I achieved my goals that I set up early days when I arrived here. Okay, so my my son, a journalist just across the park there in Orange, um, he commented to me that yours is the only office he knows of or only place where you have a bust of uh, <laughs> Alexander the Great at the yeah. front door and yeah. a bust of Banjo Patterson around the corner. Yes. That's that tells a whole story there. Well, look uh, again, you know, I admire Alexander the Great. I think everybody does that. And Benjo Patterson, uh, through my Rotary Club, we have um, we have uh, instigated the Benjo Patterson Festival. Uh, we relocate Emmerville Cottage. We were supposed to be born, Benjo Patis to be born, and I've, I've been part of that sort of documentary, um, and and I, I'm part of the, I'm part of the, almost every year, the Benjo Patterson festivities in Orange and at Yeovil. In fact, at Yeovil, if you pass through there, just, there's a big Kubra head made out of steel, would some make it? And I, um, it's there now on the park. You had that made. Pun? You had that made. Well, when you go to Dabo, just divert. Yeah, yeah, I know. From it. Molong I've to. I've seen it. You've seen it? Mm. Well, have you seen it? Uh, yes, I designed that for. <laughs> yeah, which it was very controversial, but I won't go into the controversy. Okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm very pleased again that uh, Elf, my friend there, has appreciated and and I gave. I gave it to him for, for, for you know, to, dis to be on display. It's beautiful, Chris. I think yeah. coming to your, another culture, learning it, and not only learning it, but loving it and, and wanting to tell the story. Um, it seems to me, like, as I sit in this office, and if you, you can't see all around, but there's, you can see some of the photogra photographs, and there's all sorts of interesting things. There's Kokoda, there's the Queen, Aboriginal. Uh, New Guinean and all sorts of things around the walls uh, but you're saying it's not so much a matter of pride that you've achieved these things because you've been a councillor you've been on the, on the with Rotary Club and you've had businesses and you've done these things but it's not, not so much for the money or for the glory but it's because you wanted to this tells a story about what your heart is because this is what you love yes in, in fact I remember when I was much younger, I'm nearly an OPE now, over Bloomin' 80. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, when I was very young, I think I, I was very much involved in council and council's activities, and, and I, I, uh, I was chased by uh, the Masonic movement to present me with a certificate, of, because I was pretty heavily involved with tidy tents, I'm still am. And I thought, I was 45, 50 at the time, and I thought, the certificates are for our people. <laughs> I, I sort of, um, I wasn't very happy about it. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm that old? I received it. <laughs> and of course, you know, um, the Rotary make me Paul Harry, Harry's fellow, and I thought, God, I must, must, I must be getting older. Hmm. So, you know, and, this. But I wake up one day and I thought, now, this is gratitude from people to acknowledge what you're doing 
and that in, to encourage you to keep on working and do more things. That, that's how I interpret the gesture. And you said to me too, Chris, that um, it comes out of your faith and your, your worldview that because people are made in God's image, therefore our role in this world isn't just to get stuff and money and things, but it's to actually no. serve other people. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think this is one of the prime teachings I got out of out of uh, out of our fast teaching just uh, love people help people and in, in in some events I mean it's I want to help someone before he asks me to if I can do that and um, if someone asks me to help that's a bit too light I think but anyway it can always make good yeah uh, I think that's paramount paramount to and I have this attitude with uh, I like all sorts of people, regardless of the nationality, color, even religion. As long as they're good to each other, I'm I'm, I'm very happy. Um, yeah. Something uh, very unique that you you said. Well, actually, my son gave me a copy of this some a year or two back. Um, was it something you thought of and designed? And if you could see it, I don't know if you could see it. It's a little. This is a little cross that's made up of two boomerangs. And there's uh, some Aboriginal things on the wall here, Chris. And uh, can you tell us the story of why you designed well, this? Well, um, as I said, I, I often come with, with many ideas. Some of them I have implemented, some of them still on the show, some of them are failures. This is how it goes. You don't have to stop, keep on, keep the dream alive and keep on doing things. Now, with the Oz crosses, I just uh, thought the boomerang as a special Aboriginal tool that it was there for purposes. And by joining them at the back, forming a cross, yep. which okay. that, that to me makes a, a lot cross, of sense, yeah. a lot of sense that uh, this, this symbolic cross means a lot to me I don't know it means to the others that it can bring you blessings, it can bring you uh, happiness and the cross or any other object if you really believe in that if you believe in that it will deliver the goods. Mm. As long as you don't treat just another two boomerangs together. Mm. Treat it just beyond that. Mm -hmm. Heavy mentionation beyond that. So, uh, I believe in faith. And of course, it's not secret to the fact that a lot of people, a lot of people who are very sick have been cured by having faith mm -hmm. in, in, in that they will get, get you know, you mentioned earlier about uh, you know, we we made and, and God tells us that Jesus tells us that we made uh, his his own image mm. and he gave us brains to think hands to do things and legs to travel. Now, if you use all this in the, in in for the for the goodness, you will deliver the goods. Well, one of the goods you delivered to the town was a very unique idea, and you showed me the out there in the. We've got a picture of it out there in the, the kitchen, but it was to bring. And there's some pictures here on the wall. I think with you carrying the the Olympic torch. Yeah. Uh, and you you had an idea to sort of blend the Olympic torch idea well, into reconciliation. Well, the the flame the flame is not something exclusive to anyone. And the flame, of course, it was, has been part of the Olympic Games since the day one. And I was lucky enough to carry the torch during the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney. That was a wonderful experience. And I thought the same flame, the flame can be a tool, a source to, for reconciliation. So I make this cold room which has been approved by the, the local elders and, and others. And 
we carry fly, we after smoke ceremony we lead a um, a uh, minus lamb to carry the flying from CSU into town and then we lead the cauldron which stay lit for a week and the, the we call the flame as the flame of hope and reconciliation what a wonderful thing a simple sort of a gesture and let people think about it symbols are important oh, absolutely absolutely yeah of course because yes. i see on you gave you these uh cufflinks here that uh has a symbol on it that comes from your island of patmos yeah and it's uh it has to do with john and and the island yeah correct yes. yeah so symbols for this what does this mean to you the symbol of patmos oh uh, look uh, this is uh, more or less a gift to to say that you you have you associated i s i make them in australia by the way by a greek the uh, greek uh, a manufacturer in Sydney and I sent them to the monastery but I kept some so I can give them as a gifts to the visitors remind them of the visit to the island now in orange I give you this to remind you where I come from and and the goodness of of revelations and 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 the beauty of the island yes beautiful now you told me also <coughs> talking of symbols that you took I think is it that cross there that yeah. you sent a copy of that to you can bring it down if you like yes yeah because this cross is quite different it's uh actually chris's idea was to sort of make it from australian timber well uh yes i um, i heard that uh, tasmania there's uh, plenty of nice timber and especially what sort of attracted me to go to tasmania the hue and pine and myrtle which um, apparently dates 2000 years it's a what a wonderful opportunity to make something crosses out of material which is always a religion itself so i did went to tasmania and i got um, the timber back and after a lot of trials um we we come up with this one and through a connection of a good friend of mine priest in sydney his son is also a priest who he travels a lot uh, he's connected with uh, patriarch I gave him some of these crosses and he tells me that he delivered one to the Vatican and one to the uh, Constantinople. So, yeah. Yep, nice. Yes, yes So exactly. there they are. They've, they've yeah. made their way to Rome and the Constantinople <laughs> harder. Yeah. And, and, and certainly, Christianity, yeah. And yeah. certainly, what sort of I like about, about this, it's a um, it's an, uh, an Australia sort of a signature. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what I like about it, you know, because I like anything that's Australiana, you know, I love it. Mm. I was also lucky enough over the years to <coughs> to travel almost all over Australia, from from Cairns, North, Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth, Broome, Alice Springs, Darwin, and some in between. There's a few more places I want to go. Tasmania I love, yeah. Mm. yeah. So Chris, if we're, we're rounding it up, if you wanted to say something to young Australians now, and some of them are coming from all over the world, uh, you know, every country in the world, so the immigrant, new immigrants coming to Australia, what would you say to new immigrants coming to Australia, young people coming here? Look, young and old, just believe in yourself, be good to each other, and, 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 have a faith, respect, and you will make it nicely. Mm. What else can you tell them? And and just uh, I had a lot of failures. It wasn't a beautiful old downhill. It was sometimes pretty steep uphill, but doesn't matter. You know, if you if you if you cautious, careful, you you you'll make it. Yeah. Well. <laughs> the first thing you said to me when I walked in your front door uh, was standing next to the bust of Alexander the Great and you said to me, what did the Apostle Paul say to the Athenians the, there in Greece? And when I said, well, Paul said, I've come to talk to you about the unknown God. You you told the rest of that story. Can you say that again? Well, when Paul went to uh, to the uh, to Athens, 
he uh, a beautiful man obviously from what I can read what did you call him the the world's greatest salesman absolutely absolutely why, why would you say that because um, he had a good product and he knew how to launch it he says look I admire you for believing in 12 gods I also admire you for having the unknown God here I am to tell you about the unknown God and of course the Greeks were the first to adopt Christianity as official religion mm. you know and, and that's what, what, what happened yeah I, I think it was that was that was brilliant I think I believe from the Little, little knowledge I have. If it wasn't of Paul, Christianity will never survive. I don't think it would have been, you know. Um, but uh, it, it was, it was great, and and of course, um, over the years, it created a bit of a controversy and did a bit of a damage, but overall did a lot of good things. And Chris, from what I can see and what I've heard. Um, you have, in fact, been a servant of Christ here in this town. And Absolutely. you've brought a lot of blessing to people. And um, I even just see this flame of hope and reconciliation. That's a, that's a beautiful symbol, you know. And I think the crosses and the boomerangs and uh, your pride in Patmos at all, it, it's quite a unique story. And you've got <laughs> there's other chapters here, Kokoda and all sorts of places you've been. There's not time to, to find all the stories. But um, I, th I hope that uh, it's, it's, a, it's been an encouragement to me and I think an inspiration to others to think when I come to this country, whether I belong here for 40,000 years or whether I came yesterday, um, but I have got gifts that I can give, God has given me to give to make this a better country. Well, when I, and I have a lot of Aboriginal friends, as you know, through to, you know, for, for quite a while back when I was creating the Earth Crosses, when I was a councillor, I was, I did instigate together with another councillor, the Orange City Council Aboriginal Liaison Committee, and, and, and I've done some business with them, and I found them. So I never look up, uh, I never look upon them as being different to me or can't work together. This, uh, I treat them as if I knew them forever, and I believe some of them treat me exactly the same way. They don't make any any different uh, 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 gestures or uh, tell me anything else. You know, uh, we, we we become good in businesses and in other activities. So what's wrong with that? No, that's good. Yeah. So um, yeah, it, it is. And of course, if you respect someone, he'll respect you. In my real estate, quite often people are telling me, um, how is in that street? How is the neighborhood? To which I always reply this. The neighborhood is as good as you want them to be. If you have noxious person, don't expect the people to accept you. If you're a good person, neighbors will accept you and you you can create a good neighborhood mm. well you tell me if that <laughs> if you have different opinion on that subject <laughs> okay you want to be in a good neighborhood be a good neighbor first exactly yeah. if you want people to treat you nicely yes have you ever tried to see your face in the mirror <laughs> to make funny faces <laughs> that's what can I see me the same thing the the neighbors is your mirror you know just <laughs> you, well, I don't know if I've got it wrong, but that's what I think it's happening. Okay. Well, Chris, thank you much, so much it's for your time. My pleasure, my and, pleasure. Uh, it's a great story, yeah. and I hope that people uh, are inspired. I, I certainly have been by your creativity and vision and, and big heart, so thank you for that. Well, I, uh, Jonathan and I, we had many long discussions here on on various reports and he spoke to me about it and I was looking forward to it and it was great pleasure when he rang me up this morning to say that you know and I appreciate that you visited me and I wish you all the very best and I hope we'll see each other again sometime. Oteos na God will bless you too. <laughs> <laughs>